This video will cover the impulse momentum theorem, uh, elastic and inelastic collisions, and force versus time graphs. So let's start with the impulse momentum theorem. It's not really news. Um, the impulse momentum theorem is just that the impulse is equal to the net force applied on an object times the amount of time that that net force is applied, and also is equal to the change in the momentum. So there's nothing really new here. We've already seen that the impulse is equal to the net force times the amount of time the force is applied. And we already know the definition of impulse is the change in the momentum. Um, but let's, let's think about this in terms of a specific situation. Let's say you're dropping an egg and it's going to hit the ground and you want the egg to survive. So the time when the egg is going to be in trouble is when it hits the ground. So let's think about that situation when it's hitting the ground. So right before impact, the egg is going to be moving downward. And right after the impact, the egg will be stationary. And hopefully it will be intact. But we don't know. So the egg will survive and uh, won't be crushed if the force remains small. So that's our goal. For the egg to survive, we want the net force on the egg to be small. And if we look at the impulse momentum theorem, there's really two things that we can do to keep the force small. One, we could make the change in the momentum small also. Two, we could make delta t as large as possible. So those are the two things to make the force small. You either make delta p small or you make delta t large. So if we wanted to make delta P small, that means we want the change in the egg's momentum on impact to be as small as possible. Well, one way to do that, really the only way to do that, to make the change in the momentum small, is to make sure that the momentum when it hits the ground is small. So the momentum, the initial momentum of the egg should be small. And the way to do that, because we can't control the mass of the egg, but we could control maybe the velocity of the egg. So if you were doing this and you wanted to make the egg survive, you would probably add a parachute to it, right? Because if you had a parachute, then air resistance um, will have an effect and the egg will have a smaller velocity when it hits the ground, meaning it'll have a smaller momentum when it hits the ground, which means the momentum won't change as much. And if the momentum doesn't change as much, then the force would be smaller. Okay, so that's one way to do it, add a parachute. Another way to do it is to make delta t larger. That will make the force smaller. So the way to do that is to extend the amount of time that it takes for the impact to happen. And to, to figure out how to do that, well, think about if the egg hit concrete. If the egg hit concrete, then delta t would be very small. The time it takes for that egg to come to rest would be very small because it'll, boom, hit the concrete and stop immediately. So if it hits concrete, delta t is small, and so the force is going to be big. We can make delta t larger. We could make the impact take a longer time if the egg hit some kind of cushion. So imagine the egg hits a pillow. Well, if it hits a pillow, then it's going to come to rest in a longer amount of time. And that means that the amount of net force applied to the egg will be smaller. It'll be applied over a, sm a longer amount of time, but the net force will be smaller and the egg is more likely to survive. Uh, this is also similar to if you're in a car accident. If you're in a car accident, you want the force on a person in the car to be as small as possible. So one way to do that is to obey speed limits and make sure that your velocity is relatively small so that if you hit something, your change in momentum will be relatively small as well and the force on you will be small and you'll survive. The other way that you could survive a car accident um, if you're going to come to rest, is to extend the amount of time it takes a person to come to rest. And that's what an airbag does. So if there was no airbag, then the person would most likely either hit the steering wheel or the windshield, and you'd come to rest very, very quickly. Delta T would be small, the force would be big, and that's bad for a passenger in the car. But if there's an airbag, the airbag is meant to extend the amount of time it takes for a person to come to rest. And if it extends the amount of time, then that means a smaller net force is being applied to the person, and they're more likely to survive. All right, let's think about elastic and inelastic collisions. So these two terms um, are defined as 
Well, an elastic collision is one where both momentum and energy are conserved. So in an elastic collision, momentum and energy are conserved. What that means is that there's no loss of energy. Two things collide and no energy is lost. Um, compare that to an inelastic collision. In an inelastic collision, momentum is conserved, but energy is not conserved. So in that situation, in an inelastic collision, some energy is lost to the surroundings. And the most common way that energy is lost in a collision is through either heat. Um, so like if an object hits another object, some of the energy is lost um, by raising the temperature of the two objects. Um, there is also a situation called a completely inelastic collision. In a completely inelastic collision, it's true that momentum is conserved and energy is not. But in a completely inelastic collision, the objects stick together after impact. So a completely inelastic collision could be, say, a big ball of clay hitting a box, and the two stick together after the impact and move off. That's a completely inelastic collision. Okay, let's look at force versus time graphs. Uh, in a force versus time graph, you have the vertical axis is force, horizontal axis is time, and it turns out that in this graph, the area under the curve tells you the impulse. Now, um, I'm not going to go too deep into this. Uh, if you've taken calculus, um, all we're looking at is an integral. Uh, it turns out that impulse is the integral of force um, dt, force over time. So just remember that when we find the area under the curve, when we use that term, areas above the horizontal axis are considered positive, and areas underneath the horizontal axis are considered negative. So just keep that in mind when you're finding the area under the curve.